In today's review we have the Astrock B365M Pro motherboard, a motherboard that you may see as familiar and you'd be right, as we have reviewed the ATX version of this particular model no more than two months ago. But the question is, will the micro ATX version live up to its price and also compare to the ATX version? Watch this video and find out. The Astrock B365M Pro 4 is cheaper than the ATX version of the same model, 1 US dollars cheaper. You can't make these things up. On a serious note, this is not that uncommon as many micro ATX motherboards are either the same price as their full ATX counterparts or even more expensive because demand is lower in the micro ATX segment. So they say. Anyway, the accessory bundle is pretty simple in its contents. You have one quick installation guide, one user manual, a support CD with all the required drivers and optional software, the classic IO shield and two SATA data cables. You also get three screws for the M.2 sockets and one standoff for the M.2 socket. Basically, you have the essentials to get you going into your PC building experience and also to keep you going with those M.2 screws and standoffs. Not bad Astrock, not bad at all. Starting from the top, the Astrock B365M Pro 4 has an 8 power phase design, which I suspect is more likely a 6 plus 2 configuration, that is 6 phases for the CPU and 2 phases for the memory. The VRM uses Sinopower made MOSFETs, particularly the SM4337 for the high side and the SM4336 for the low side. This is a VRM system that we have seen before, on more expensive motherboards even, so, so far we are in a very good standing. The capacitors used on this motherboard are manufactured by a company that we have seen before, but which I still fail to identify from just looking at the Lego placed on the capacitors. Nevertheless. The PWM controller is made by UPI Semiconductor and is the well-used and well-known model UP9521P. The VRM cooling is pretty basic as it consists of a single metal heatsink that is placed over the main VRM components. This type of cooling has been used before by many manufacturers on motherboards that are in the same price range, so we are not surprised at all. And with our Intel i9-9900K CPU installed on this little motherboard, the results in terms of VRM thermals are pretty easy to figure out, as the CPU will start to throttle. Not by much, but throttling is an issue. And as always, the only way to fix this issue is by either using a top flow CPU cooler that will blow air over the VRM area of the motherboard or by having an additional fan to blow air over the VRM. While this seems bad and truth be told, it sort of is, this still is a motherboard that uses the B365 chipset which is being tested with an i9-9900K CPU running at 5GHz, a thing which you shouldn't do. I am doing it, so you don't have to. Moving lower on the motherboard, the storage options are good, with two Ultra M.2 sockets available, both supporting NVMe SSDs as boot drives. Only the top M.2 socket is covered by a hissing, however, but the lower second M.2 socket will benefit from the indirect airflow generated by the graphics card installed above it. There is also a small M.2 socket dead center on the motherboard, that is the standard M.2 E-key socket, which allows for the usage of a dedicated Wi-Fi or Bluetooth network card, which means one thing, that the Astrock B365M Pro 4 is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth ready out of the box, and you can use whatever network card you so desire. The standard storage options available on this little motherboard are six SATA 6 ports separated into two locations, Basically, you have four SATA slots into the standard right side of the motherboard location and then you have two more SATA slots on the lower edge of the motherboard, right next to the power and reset headers. This is a great feature that I cannot wait to see be implemented on every single motherboard from today on, as it not only makes the cable routing easier, but also makes the used SATA slots easily accessible when the system is fully operational, because many times, the SATA ports are completely covered by your graphics card. Other features on this motherboard include the metal reinforced PCIe Express slot, in this case only the main one closed to the CPU socket is benefiting from the metal reinforcement. The main point of this feature is to prevent the damage of the actual PCIe slot caused by a heavy graphics card. This could happen when the system is being moved around, but more than often it is a design choice. And the second feature is plenty of RGB possibilities. The motherboard itself has no RGB LEDs installed. In fact, 
Come to think about it, I think it has no LEDs at all, but it has 3 RGB headers to control any of your RGB devices or components. From these 3 headers, 2 of them are the standard 4 pin RGBs and the last one is the newer style 3 pin addressable RGB header. This way, people that want RGB can always control all the RGB devices through the motherboard and people that don't want RGB, well, this motherboard has none installed and everyone's happy. At the back we have the I.O. panel which contains the usual ports. From left to right we have two USB 2.0 ports and a combined PS2 port which will take either a keyboard or a mouse. Then there is a single HDMI port next to one VGA and one DVI-D port. Alongside those you have a single USB Type-C port and finally four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports which also support ESD protection. The RJ45 LAN port uses an Intel Knetor card and finally we have the audio ports. This IO panel is a mixed bag of old and new technologies with plenty of options available. Now that you know what this motherboard has to offer, we can get into the BIOS and I'm not going to go in depth in it and bore you to hell because well, it is the same BIOS as other ASRock motherboards, with the added bonus of the easy mode page which will help a lot of people that are just starting into the PC building and tweaking. Other than that, the structure of the BIOS remains unchanged, which is good, as a BIOS first needs to be functional and not just pretty. We start our performance testing with GTA 5, running at 1080p with all the settings turned to very high, with vertical synchronization disabled. Here you can see that the ASRock B365M Pro 4 is pretty much at the same level as its ATX counterpart. In fact, this is going to be a trend throughout the entire testing section of this review, as these boards are very close. Nevertheless, the motherboard achieved an average frame rate of 149 frames per second with the minimum frame rate at 85 frames per second. The second game to be featured in our review is the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, also running at 1080p with the ultra preset selected and hairworks disabled. The motherboard reached an average frame rate of 120 frames per second with a minimum frame rate of 71 frames per second. Yet again, this motherboard is either behind or ahead of its ATX version. The third game is Metro Exodus, running at 1080p with the ultra preset selected for all graphical settings and is also running in DirectX 12 mode with vertical synchronization disabled. In this game, the little motherboard reached an average frame rate of 67 frames per second with a minimum frame rate of 47 frames per second. Overall, quite an enjoyable experience. The final game to be featured in this review is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running at 1080p with DirectX 12 mode enabled and all the graphical settings turned up to their maximum. Vertical synchronization is also disabled by default. In this game, the ASRock B365M Pro 4 reached an average frame rate of 68 frames per second, with the minimum frame rate hovering at 62 frames per second. Overall, there were no dips into the frame rate of all games tested with this motherboard. The ASRock B365M Pro 4 is priced at around 86 or 87 US dollars or euros, and for that you get plenty of features and performance from a motherboard that has a small footprint. First of all, we have two M.2 sockets available, one has a heatsink for passively cooling the SSDs once installed. The VRM system and the used components are good when taken into consideration the B365 chipset, however the VRM cooling is average at best, and if you decide to use a high TDP Intel CPU on this motherboard for whatever reason, then make sure you have proper airflow over the VRM area of this motherboard, otherwise throttling will happen. You also get a nifty E-key M.2 socket which will allow you to install and use your desired Wi-Fi network card. The ASRock B365 Pro 4 is a good choice for a gaming micro ITX system that also needs to look good. The build quality is very good and the features are plentiful and useful. The only drawback as with many motherboards is the average VRM cooling, which can only be addressed with the usage of a top flow air CPU cooler or with an extra fan that will push air over the VRM area of the motherboard. One thing to add before we end this review is that this motherboard uses Elna made capacitors for the audio system and has as its centerpiece the Realtek ALC892, which is not the best nor the newest chip around, but it does its job well and has the Elna capacitors to improve the overall sound stage. Would I recommend this motherboard to anyone? I'd have to say yes, because it does everything that it has promised, from features to performance in games. These types of motherboards were never intended to be used with high TDP overclocking CPUs in the first place, so pairing this motherboard with, say, a locked i5 CPU would make for a good gaming system that also looks the part. If you like this review, then perhaps you can consider subscribing and commenting, and also 
If you want to support me directly, there is a Patreon page available in the description. Thanks for watching.